Okay, so it is Saturday afternoon, not evening yet. I've already got a nice glass of wine here. And uh, I've been answering some emails and some Facebook private messages, things like that. And I've also been having some interesting conversations lately with some friends of mine about what basically boils down to what's called the underdetermination of science or rather what I would argue is a lack of understanding relative to nutrition and exercise science of the idea of the underdetermination of fact in science. And I think it's actually rather important that I address this. So, uh, and I, it's not a huge topic. It's not that hard to explain. So I don't think I really need to have like some giant blog post or some article somewhere on it. I can just kind of talk it out a little bit. But it's very important to understand this concept of the underdetermination of fact in science uh, if we're going to make sense of what's going on in nutrition, in fitness, exercise, etc. All of the, you know, the different fields that we can basically just put under the umbrella of health or fitness. So what do I mean by this? What I mean is that Unlike in mathematics, the word fact in science means something quite different. So in mathematics, 2 plus 2 is 4 is a fact, and it's immutable. The laws that, for instance, Pascal, the mathematician, the Greek mathematician, came up with are still true today. In mathematics, it's not true that the theorems get overturned over time. They remain true once they're proven to be true. So when we say that something actually is proven to be true in mathematics, that's actually what it sounds like it means, which is nice. One of the things I like about mathematics and why I got my degree in it. Unfortunately, science doesn't work that way. Science doesn't have facts in the way that mathematics does. Facts are mostly true in science. Uh, in fact, they can seem totally, completely true. They can make all kinds of intuitive sense. The greatest minds on the planet can agree that it is true. This particular theory is true. And then it turns out not to be true. The most Blatant example, of course, is the idea of the sun revolving around the earth. The greatest minds of the time, the Einsteins of the day, people who were as smart as Isaac Newton, as Kepler, people of that caliber honestly believed the sun revolved around the earth and they had good reason to. There was a pretty decent amount of evidence and mathematics to back up this idea. Not to mention the intuitive idea. I mean, every single day I see with my eyes that the sun revolves around the earth. Right? It's obvious. It clearly does. But it doesn't. And that's the crazy part. That very often, more often than, we're, than we as human beings are comfortable with, things that seem totally true, that have a ridiculous amount of scientific backing, are in fact false. And this is the reality of science, is that nothing's ever 100% true. We can believe it to be true. We can be convinced that it's true. We can have a ton of evidence to support the notion that it is true. That doesn't make it true. That just makes it really close to possibly being true. So gravity, right? Like I believe in gravity, mostly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it exists. Uh, in fact, I have this this uh, joke, and I, I may, maybe I'll get in trouble for this, but uh, uh, whenever someone tells me they don't believe in evolution, I respond by saying I don't believe in gravity because both of them are only theories. And th that's true. That is a fact. I mean, they're only theories. They're theories in the scientific sense in that they are not 100% positively, without a doubt, true. 
Not in the mathematical sense, where once you've proven a theorem to be true, it's true. You're done. You never have to prove it again. Nobody can ever overturn that. It's done. It is proven to be true. It is a fact. Unfortunately, in the world of science, we don't get that kind of fact. So if that's not even, we don't even get that luxury of truth, that luxury of absolutism, of 100% certainty in something, in a science that is as robust, as aged, as physics, right? Even in physics, we can't be totally sure of the greatest theories that physics has to offer, like the laws of thermodynamics, right? I mean, something that robust is even still the facts, quote unquote, there are still underdetermined. They're not 100% true. We're just so darned positive that they're true that we choose to believe them regardless. And it's reasonable. We have reason to believe that. Uh, doesn't mean we're right. Just means we have reason to believe it. <laughs> but if it's, if physics, way up here, the most robust science of all, still doesn't have 100% certainty on its greatest laws, on the greatest theorems in physics, if there's no 100% certainty there, can we imagine way down in like Toddlerville where nutrition science and exercise science live? How much certitude we really have? How certain can we be that any particular health system is absolutely the way to go? If we can't be sure completely in physics, I mean, there are a lot of people right now arguing about, say, string theory, right? There are a lot of physicists on one side who think string theory is true. A lot of people who are on the other side who think string theory is false. Same thing happened originally when quantum mechanics was around. And same thing has happened with other types of theories that turned out not to be true. Quantum mechanics turned out to be correct, or at least we think it to be correct, <laughs> as much as we can. Uh, other theories in physics turned out not to be correct. Uh, we don't know yet about string theory. String theory could be true. It could be not true. And this is some complicated stuff with every ridiculous amount of real hard work being done at a level that is substantially more powerful than the kinds of studies that tend to come out in nutrition science and exercise science. The, the, the studies that are coming out in nutrition science and exercise science are notoriously um, flawed in, in most respects. Uh, that isn't to say that it's the fault of the scientist. It's the fault of just the subject matter. <laughs> You're kind of boned, really. I mean, how do you test out whether or not you are going to, with a particular health system or a fitness system or a diet or whatever else, increase longevity of a human being and have enough data to support that? Imagine, you'd have to follow like two, three, four, five thousand people for over their entire lifetime. And that would be one group. And then you'd have to have another control group. And these would have to be double blind, right? For this entire time. To be really positive, to have the level of certainty that you can find in many other types of sciences where they're able to do studies that are functionally of that type. They have that kind of power behind them in a lot of other sciences. Unfortunately, it's just so unrealistic in the health sciences to have that kind of robustness in your actual uh, 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 study design. It's nearly impossible. So we're stuck dealing with very low grade data and trying to make decisions for our lives, for our health, for everything that is really about as important as it could possibly be based on the worst kind of data. So my feeling as a rule is that as long as you take seriously the concept of the underdetermination of facts in science and then relate that to uh, the fitness field, 
especially when we're talking about nutrition or we're talking about, you know, what kinds of exercises you should be doing and whatever else is going to make you awesome or live longer or whatever, that so long as you take seriously that you can't be sure, you'll probably be fine. Being a fanatic is bad for you. <laughs> it's also just false. You can't be a fanatic about something that doesn't have a lot of support behind it. It will seem like it does, just like it seemed like the sun revolved around the earth. It really did. There was more support for that than most diets. A heck of a lot more support for that idea than most diets have, uh, than most workout programs do. My workout programs and my gym, I cannot be sure, are in any way optimal. I think every single month, I think that based on what's happened, I'm making the right decision by saying, let's keep this stuff and let's throw that stuff away. I think I'm making the right decision. But a lot of that is really subjective. I don't have the luxury of, of uh, uh, being able to lock in certain variables and you know make them constants and only focus on other variables. I don't have that luxury. I just have to kind of make guesses as time goes on. This is usually what's happening with most coaches. We're all making guesses the best that we can um, based on whatever data we got. And it's good. It, you know, if you look at broad populations over time, you can make some pretty decent inferences, but can we really be sure that one training routine is really that much better than another? Really? I don't think we can. I think that um, other than the, in the extremes, there are clearly like a batch of routines or a batch of training systems that are better than others. And we've just kind of figured that out because of the, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of athletes out there that are doing them. So we have pretty good correlative evidence, meaning that there's lots of correlation here uh, between success of athletes and these particular types of programs uh, versus the other type where there's total lack of success and with lots of other programs. <laughs> that doesn't make it 100% true. It just means we have some decent evidence to at least have some faith in it. Um, and then, of course, again, with the diet thing, I think that that's where people tend to get the most fanatic. I mean, there is some, within my field of Olympic lifting, there is fanaticism with programming. There's fanaticism with different types of squatting or even like, you know, uh, uh, how to move a bar in a snatch or something. You know, like people get very upset about this kind of stuff. It's very silly. But, uh, in nutrition, it's even worse. You want to get flamed. You have a blog, by the way. You want to get flamed. The best thing you can do uh, is criticize a diet. It doesn't matter which one. Just pick one. Random diet. Criticize it. Not even like a lot, but a little bit. Tiny bit. Suggest that it might not be the end-all, be-all. The grand poobah of diets. And you will get flamed. I guarantee it. Uh, by at least a few people. Um, that's crazy. It's crazy if you take seriously, again, the idea of the underdetermination of fact, that you cannot prove with certainty that any particular system in health actually does what it says it does. We're making best guesses here. So I'm not against health, obviously. I am a coach. <laughs> what I do for a living is I help people to become physically better versions of themselves than they used to be. I obviously believe in this stuff, but I strongly believe in the idea even more than I believe in the other stuff, in the idea that you should be kind of mellow about it. That fundamentally, we can't know for sure. And if we can't know for sure, you can't be a fanatic. That's just a fact. Maybe it's not a mathematical fact. Maybe that's a scientific fact. I don't know. But my advice to all people on this planet is to mellow out, drink a little wine, have some fun. Don't get mad at people who disagree with you about diet or exercise or something else like that. Uh, uh, it's perfectly okay to debate this stuff. I like debate. That's fun. But uh, do not get upset because somebody criticized your diet because you can't be sure. Don't get upset because somebody had criticized your workout routine because you can't be sure that those things that you're into really are optimal.
that they're the best, even though it sounds like they are. Even though there's a lot of evidence, scientific evidence, apparently, or it seems like there is, to back up your claims. That's not enough. The sun does not revolve around the earth. We just thought it did for most of human history. Thank <laughs> you.